It was an awesome night in Sifki Stadium. It's really cool to see uh, our students. They stayed all the way through the game. That end zone was just full. It was really, really cool. Um, just the fans turning out. It's really special for me, you know, being here for this amount of time to see the students, uh, our alumni, the city of San Jose embrace our team and our university that way. It's really, really special. I, you know, I've coached in a lot of games here where we didn't quite have that. And it's just, it's awesome to see. I think it, the players feel it. I think they feed off it. Um, and it's just a, it's a great way to spend a Friday night. And so um, we're really excited about this one. That's a good football team. I thought we played a really good game. Um, I give tons of credit to Coach Arroyo and that staff there and what they've been able to do in a short amount of time. Um, they, they are a very well coached team. And they're going to have, they're going to do really good things the rest of the way. Um, but I'm also really excited about our staff and, and what our coaches did. I thought Coach McGiven and Coach Odom both called great games. Thought the players were prepared. Coach White in the kicking game, um, really, really prepared. And I thought our players executed and played with incredible effort and energy and enthusiasm. And it was just a fun, fun night in Sefki Stadium, which is awesome. Uh, I mean, how else do you want to spend your Friday night? And uh, it was really, really cool. So I could not be happier for the team, the players, the coaches, our fans, everybody that, uh, you know, is, is part of this thing. It's really, really special. And I just can't wait to see, you know, how we come to practice this week. So what do you guys got for me? All right, Coach Brandon Grant's on a win tonight. And so uh, one area of progress that I've observed is in um, time of possession in the run game. and. Uh, I think it's this must be the second uh, game in a row uh, winning the time of possession battle. So talk about how um, San Jose State has been able to um, improve in that area over the over the season. Well, you know, it's you know, Andrew, I don't, I don't, we don't go into a game plan or a season kind of with like time of possession being a statistical target for us. Um, we're really just kind of looking to execute and play good football and take what the defense has given us. And uh, I think it's been really exciting. I think Coach McGiven's done a great job with that. And uh, the other part of that is like our defense is playing fantastic, right? Like that's team football, right? Because our defense is, you know, people aren't having extended drives against them. And so that's a shorter amount of time they possess the ball. And then our offense is able to sustain drives with the run game. Um, our, our offensive line that continues to mature um, the way where Shevin's throwing the ball, and then also his escapability and his ability to extend drives. And so um, those are all those things that kind of come together to make that thing uh, better. Uh, you know, time of possession doesn't always mean, mean you won the game, but um, I'm, I'm probably more excited about the statistic about the uh, turnover margin. That's the one I'm excited about. Uh, Brent, you, you referenced the defense. Um, when you were watching them on tape and preparing for them and they – Averaging 38 a game, could you have imagined you could shut them down the way you did? And what were the, the keys to making that happen? I don't know that I thought we would you know, be able to shut them down on that level, but I have confidence in our defense. We have a good defensive football team. Uh, they're extremely well coached. Every one of those coaches does an outstanding job with his respective group, and it was a lot of fun to see them play. They play with great effort and intensity. A lot of guys play, um, so they're able to stay fresh. and. Uh, it's, it, it's just really, it's been really fun to watch all season. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, if we can continue to, to pr perform at a high level. Is there a focus you had when you see the stop and then get the start with a certain thing or what? Well, for us, you know, defensively, it always starts with like stopping the run. You know, that's just a simple old football adage. But like, if you stop the run, you're going to have a chance to be in the game. and. And uh, I think our defensive front has done that. When you talk about guys like Cade Hall and Fehoko and Lando Gray and uh, Kyle Harmon and, you know, uh, Brian Parham, Parham, like there, there is just a lot of really good stuff there. So um, I think when we play as a team and we run to the football and play with that kind of effort and physicality, that, that defense is fun to watch. Excellent game tonight, Coach. So you're now sitting atop the Mountain West, and you also have a top 25 defense. Do you feel it's time that the San Jose State Spartans um, earn a ranking on the top 25 in the nation? You know, I don't know about that. Um, sure. Okay. You know, what am I supposed to say? Darn right we do. Let's go. Um, I, you know, I think for us, 
you know, we're five games in. You know what I mean? We're five games in, and we're playing our tails off. And I love being around this team. There's just a special kind of camaraderie and brotherhood about this football team. Coming to work every day is fun. Uh, the players enjoy each other. The staff enjoys each other. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And so, you know, where we end up and all that, like, we, we really, we are heavily focused on our process. That has been a mantra for us from day one, and that's where we're going to lean. So right now, we're going to enjoy this tonight and, and tomorrow, and, and then it's all about Fresno. And we got a big game coming in a week from tomorrow, and that's really all that matters once we, you know, get done with this 24-hour celebration. Coach, uh, second play of the game, you guys give up a 27-yard run. Third play of the game, you send Jenkins on a blitz, put him in second and 18. Felt like you were in control ever after that. Um, just what did you think of that call and the execution, and, and how did that change the I thought the it was big time because tackling their quarterback is hard to do. Getting them down, like that was all over the film, right? Like getting people getting there in the backfield and then not being able to finish on him because he's big and strong and he can move. Um, and that was a great play by Trey Jenkins on the sack. Um, I don't know if I share the same opinion as you, like feeling like in control three plays into the game. I don't ever feel that way. But um, that was an awesome play in the game. And, uh, you know, it was, I thought Coach Odom did a really good job of, of mixing up pressures and then playing base defense and dropping eight and all that stuff. So I thought that was really effective. Kind of a two-part question, Brent. Um, is there maybe the familiarity with Marcus and his staff add a little bit more advantage or insight in the game planning? No. Or, OK, I figured it wouldn't. <laughs> um, maybe speaking to the staff that actually um, helps prepare for the, the week ahead, ahead of the games, like the analysts, I think, and whatnot, and their preparation for you guys as a coaches when you come into the room and have everything lined up and, and what they're presenting you from, from game to game. You know, everyone kind of does that together. So it's not like per se like, um, like those, like, the young coaches, the, the graduate assistants, like those guys that are kind of uh, in their apprenticeship to be a college football coach, I, I would call it. Um, you kind of in that role. I did that for three years, OK? Not everybody does it that long, which tells you how bad of a football coach I was. But um, it was, uh, you do all the, like we're really good to our GAs, but back then, like, you were like going to pick up guys dry cleaning and like getting their car washed. and. Picking up at the airport at 3 in the morning is a much different thing. Um, I feel great about our graduate assistants. Those guys work their tails off. And uh, the game planning and, and the collective kind of process of building the plan, that is a huge collaboration between everybody on either side of the ball or in the kicking game. So I'm interested to hear what was going through your head when Chev went back-to-back -to -back touchdowns within the span of a minute. Um, like, really, I was... So I've seen, you know, this team came from behind down 17 a week ago. UNLV did against New Mexico. So I was really in that headspace. Like, no, we need to keep our foot on the gas pedal. Um, so I was obviously excited that Chevin made those plays. But I was more like keeping the emphasis on, like, like let's finish this. Like, let's not stop. And um, I've been in games like that before here where, you know, we jump on somebody. Last year, Utah State, right? We're up 14 nothing. Next thing I know, we're like, getting blown out. And, and so I'm just, I think maybe as the coach, you, you kind of lean that way. Um, like, it's not over till it's over. And I've been in college football long enough to know that is absolutely true. So when Shevin made those plays, I was like, great. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's stop him. Let's get another one. You know, that's where my head went. I know, I know you see Shevin every day in practice, but do you still get wowed on a daily basis type thing? And what impresses you most about, I don't know how there's a specific number, but 160 throws without an interception against this team? Yeah, you know, he is like that. And uh, I think that's the reason that we were so interested when he entered the portal is because, like, we had played against him and we knew how difficult he was to defend and kind of what he brought to the table and uh, also just how competitive he was. Because we saw it, – it's not just, like, how he played against us. When we were getting ready to play them, right, we had to, like, game plan and scout and look at all his previous games. And he was so tough and so competitive and – you know, when Hawaii played UCLA, I think we played them a week or two after they played UCLA a year ago, and UCLA hit Shevin 100 times, and he kept getting up every time. I'm tough, like crazy tough, and he kept getting up. Um, in terms of the, 
how he's throwing the ball and that stuff, I think Coach McGivens is doing a great job, right? Coach McGivens is doing a great job taking him through his process, giving him good places to go with the football. And to Shevin's credit, he's taking the coaching and, and really, really focusing on intentional practice, right? He's just not out there throwing it around. He is dead serious. You should see him in a walkthrough. He goes through his entire progression, right? He'll drop back and he'll take that and take that, take that. You know, like he'll go and he'll like each motion. And that's the kind of preparation he puts into it. It makes him really, really good. You, you have talked about growth, maturity, and going through the process. Specifically with the offensive line, you can see it game to game. And what, what is Coach Oglesby, I, besides watching practice, I, you know, I could watch, but I don't get it. But what else are they doing that, that's getting them that way? Big Josh is a fantastic football coach. Um, he really is. He does an outstanding job. And maybe the best thing he does is he does an incredible job of creating an environment in that room that is super competitive, but also super connecting. Like those guys are so close. And they love Josh and he loves them. You know, he'll still be hard on them, right? He'll still yell at them or whatever. But he's also quick to put his arm around them. And so he's like always teaching and always kind of, you know, in their ear. And, you know, those guys are like walking through the building every day and they're always going to check in with Big Josh and, and I think that just creates a creates an environment where they're eager to learn and eager to work. And at that position, if you're not those two things, you have no chance. And Josh, Josh does an incredible job of creating that environment where they want to do the two things you'd have to do to be good at. So I'm interested to obviously you and a royal great relationship. How long are you going to wait to text them? Have you already talked, or how long do you wait to My talk wife about just a game? I just to go see him at the bus. Oh, be, okay. Before they take off. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, we'll probably talk tomorrow. Um, but like I said, they're doing a great job there, and I believe in him, and I'm excited to see what they can do next. All right, one more question. Andrew? Yeah, so when I was getting the stat sheet uh, from the handouts, uh, one name that stood out in particular was Jordan Pollard. He's only in his first year, but he, had a, he made a great impression on many Spartan fans with his uh, interception against Western Michigan, and he led tonight with seven tackles. So... What can you say about Jordan Pollard's uh, development this year? Well, he is uh, learning fast, right? Trial by fire. But, um, you know, Coach White is a fantastic football coach. And he coached our special teams and our inside linebackers. And uh, he identified Jordan as a recruit that he really liked. And, um, and it's fun to see, you know, sometimes when players show up, you don't know – like, you don't know how it's going to look, right? You look at their high school tape, you spend a lot of time with them, you recruit them, you don't know how it's going to look. And then they get there and they just go. And it's, like, natural and obvious and easy to see. And that's been Jordan Pollard. Like, Jordan has just been really, really active, um, really, really physical. Uh, we had a scrimmage with our younger players um, early in – or not early in camp, but, like, uh, kind of right before our first game. And Jordan was everywhere. And all of us are looking around like, hey, we have, we have to figure this out because he's ready. Um, and so Coach White does a really good job of giving those guys, of teaching them and coaching them and putting them in a position where they can have success. And it's exciting to see Jordan do that. All right, one last question. This is the final final. Yeah. Coach, it's Friday night. You got an extra day in your shortest road trip of the season. Just how do you plan to make the most of the extra time you've got? Um, we're going to let the players rest their bodies a little bit. Um, I think they, they need that, and I think that's good for them. Um, and then as us as coaches, we'll get on. We'll put this thing to bed tomorrow, and we'll get on to Fresno. And so um, that part of it's important, right? Just how quickly can we learn from this, you know, ask ourselves, you know, what did we learn, and how can we improve? That's what it is. What did we learn? How can we improve? And that's what tomorrow will be about. And then we'll start putting the, the plan together for Fresno. And, um, you know, they still got another game to play and all that stuff. So here we go.